Today we will be looking at a couple of more front-end and also back-end or integrations from Home Assistant Community Store. Some of them are specific for users that have those types of devices, but others can be used by everybody. So let's get started. first component we will be looking at today is a front-end component or dashboard component called Clock Weather Card. As Missy said on yesterday's stream, it's sometimes very hard to find a card that matches everything that you want from Weather Card and that it also looks nice. So let's jump straight into this one. In your hex, type in Clock and we'll be installing Clock Weather Card. Click on Download, Download and at the time of the recording the latest version is version 2.8.5. And now we have to reload. The easiest way to edit is to use the examples from the documentation. And there are a couple of them. There is a minimal configuration and there is also full configuration. So for the purpose of this video, I will be copying full configuration and then we can customize it inside Home Assistant UI. Let's go to overview and my weather related page. Click on edit and add card. And we will select clock weather card. This is the simplest configuration type where we are using only two lines, but I will replace it to use all the available data. But we also need to customize it. For example, temperature sensor and humidity sensor. These are our temperature and humidity sensors. Of course, if you do not have external temperature and humidity sensors, you can omit them. But if you have, you can replace it with your own data. For example, in my case, those are balcony temperature and balcony humidity. If you want, you can customize the animation. For example, currently it's true, but it can be false. The image is now static. Forecast rows can be reduced to, for example, three or expanded to more rows. Currently for my system, maximum is six rows of weather data because that is how much data in future my system does collect. You can change the language, time pattern, time format, date format. You can hide today section or hide forecast section. You can show humidity, set it to true. Hide clock, hide date. Hourly forecast can be visible or not. You can specify the time zone, show decimal, and real field temperature and air quality index if you, of course, have those sensors available. I have both AQI and also real field temperature. If we click save, we get something like this inside your UI where you can see each day the minimum and the maximum temperature and also current temperature on the scale between minimum and maximum. Plus you have icons for the weather forecast. Is it cloudy, sunny, rainy, snowy or whatever? And of course current date, time and also temperature from the outside. As always, if you do find this component useful, click on three dots, go to repository and don't forget to give it a star to say thanks to the author. Next integration or actually next two components are very specific. They require you to have Volkswagen or a related manufacturer of the car and yet you also have WeConnect service. This is the subscription service. Plus additional condition in our case here is that it works only inside the EU. So let's get started with the installation. In the search bar type Carnet and click on Volkswagen Connect. As I said, for this, you need to have active subscription. You also need to have car that falls in this category that manufacture is Volkswagen. And the last thing is, yes, this works only inside the EU. Click on download, download. And at the time of the recording, the latest version is version 5.0.3. There are actually two hacks components that are related to Volkswagen and V-Connect or Volkswagen Connect. The difference between one and the other is that this one is maintained more frequently. The last update to the other component was at the end of 2023. Now that it has been installed, we have to go to settings and we also need to restart our Home Assistant because this is not a front-end component, but an integration. After Home Assistant has restarted, go to settings, integrations, add integration, and search for Volkswagen, connect, and we will start the configuration process. Again, we will need username, password, and S pin if you already have account. If you do not have account or subscription, this will not work. 
My car name is T-Rock and I will fill in the credentials. And here it is, name of the car, email address, password, S pin, country code. You can uncheck this box to make car read only. That means that you cannot interact with the car. Then you can also specify if you want to make any conversions in the units. For example, imperial units or kilometers to miles. If you want, you can also enable full debug logs for the API. But yeah, we will not be doing that. Click on submit. If everything is okay, the screen will pop up with the VIN of the car. Click on submit. And here we have option of what data we can pull. Position, door lock, fuel level, oil inspection distance, fuel range, API trips, door closed, hood closed, etc. etc. Click on submit. Select an area and finish. If we click on Volkswagen Connect, we now have one device with 43 entities. We can control and unlock doors and also trunk of the car. We can see what is the car type, what is my current range, status of the door, are doors locked, it says unlocked but actually all of them are locked, fuel level, fuel range, hood status, last trip average, yeah, last trip average speed, last trip duration, last trip length, odometer, oil inspection, distance and days, parking light, parking time, I parked yesterday, service inspection days, inspections distance, trunk closed, trunk unlocked, which actually it is not, vehicle is not moving, and then the state of the windows. Plus we also have diagnostics, API capabilities, parking position, selective status, token trips, vehicle, last connected was yesterday, last refresh data was two minutes ago, this is the data from the server, Position is away, which actually it's not, it's home. Request in progress disconnected and the request results. And if you have Volkswagen car, if you have Wii subscription, you can also pull the data from your car also inside Home Assistant. If the car is not internal combustion engine, but is electric car, you will get the data for that. For example, if it's charging or not, the status of the battery, etc, etc. But as I said, it all depends on your car. What you will do with all of this data? It all depends to you. But there is one additional component that is the third component for this video and this is the front end. So this is the third component but I will not be using this one. The reason is yeah, because there are some better ones but this one is a reference inside the previous component as something that you can use to visualize the data. What you would need to do is download the files from www folder and copy it to your configuration www folder. These are the PNG and GIF files. And then copy this data inside your YAML configuration or your UI configuration. But there is actually one other component that is not officially related to this one, but it may be better for you. So actually the third component we are going to look today is Ultra Vehicle Card. This can be used with any car you have, but you need to have car and also details or data from that car pulled inside Home Assistant. Unfortunately, this one is also not part of the hex, so we will need to copy this URL here, go to three dots, custom repositories, paste the URL, select dashboard and click add. If we close it, we now have ultra vehicle card, click on it, click download, at the time of the recording, the latest version is version 1.6.1 and click download. Since this is a front-end component, we don't need to restart a home assistant, we just need to click on reload. And that's it. If we now go to overview, edit, find where we want to add this component, click add card, select ultra vehicle card in the list, we will go for fuel vehicle, let's rename it to T-Rock, and this is how it may look for your car. For example, I've selected that I have vehicle that is based on the internal combustion engine or fuel vehicle. This is the image that I uploaded. Layout can be single column or double column. And then you can either format the entities. For example, it added kilometers here, or you can disable it and end entities for your car. In my case, this is the fuel level, fuel range, is the engine on, location, mileage and car state. This one actually should be here. We now can see on the image the car is not home. Currently it only has 1600 kilometers. Fuel is at 57% and the remaining range is 280 kilometers. 
If you want to customize further, you can pull additional entities. For example, I've pulled the door locked state. Inactive icon means that the door is unlocked and active icon means that the door has lock. On the image, it will look something like this. So the more entities you have, the more of them you can add to this card. If you don't like the icons, sizes, labels, you can change all of them, plus also change all of the colors on the card itself. Use bar gradient, and now it will change color if the tank is full, it will be green, and if it reaches 10%, the fuel bar will be red. Click save, and this is how you can add any card, not just a Volkswagen, inside your home assistant, no matter if this is an electric car or car with the internal combustion engine. I really do hope that you did find in this video something useful. I know that one of those was very specific and requires you to have free conditions met, Volkswagen, subscription and also live into the EU, but hopefully some of you will find it interesting. On the other hand, if you are interested in the weather card, here is another weather card and don't forget to check my other videos because I already did special video just related to weather integrations. And also, if you have any car that can be hooked up to Home Assistant, you now have additional choice on how to visualize data for that car inside Home Assistant. Don't forget to read all the documentation in the each and every GitHub repository so far. And of course, if you did like the component, say thanks to the author by clicking on the star on the GitHub repository. It will mean a lot to them. If you have any kind of a comment or question in regard to this video, those components that I covered today, as always, you can drop them down in a comment section below. If you yourself have found some gem that is still not part of the hacks that you created yourself, post me a link down in a comment section below, or at least drop me a hint on how I can find it on the GitHub itself. And last but not least, as always, I would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, shared or commented on my videos. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.